going to put us with a we are live tweet twitch.tv slash torrent think tank there it goes there it is let me pull up my show notes God, i have so many things here <laughs> too many windows <laughs> open holy moly oh yeah i had to kind of parse mine down a little bit I, I i am so famous for this i will sit here and have 40 tabs open no like no doubt no shame yeah. no shame no doubt it's out there 40 tabs plus like <laughs> i just i i and then i'll forget that they're open after a while and go what was that for and then <laughs> it's just so so silly and then i open it and go oh yeah i've had that open for like a month and i haven't used it let's close that tab <laughs> yeah that happens with my uh with my phone like i'll have chrome open then i look and it's like 28 tabs i'm like oh what is that look back and it's like valentine's day gift ideas i can close that yeesh i do the same thing because i don't like use the old tab that had open i just make a new one yeah and i mean I, I might need that later I might need, you know valentine's day gift ideas in 2019 <laughs> yeah except for next year yeah we got that <laughs> I know it's just it makes me laugh that <laughs> that we have to that we have that it's just kind of funny so yeah that that was my life just now and I am I'm just I, I cleansed a little bit of tabs here <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> um <laughs> the uh I think tomorrow I may go get that tv I was talking to you about oh yeah yeah I think I, might I, do I, I meant to ask you about that yeah, I so I realized. So okay, here's the little backstory. So I am terrible about exploring where I live in this new area right now. Like I've lived here for almost like it's it's going to be like a year in like a couple of days. And yeah. I have not done a ton of exploring outside of my really immediate like little neighborhood area. And mm -hmm. so my hairdresser um she moved to a new studio location and Ooh. she, you know, what not too far away, but in a completely different like area than I've been to before. So uh, I had an appointment with her yesterday and I went to go see her and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like all these stores here. There's like a Michael's Crafts here. There's a Ooh. mall here. There's a Best Buy here. There's a, oh, like, Staples and all this stuff. And I'm like, how did I not know that this was like right down the road from where I was <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like I and I think there's even a Walmart over there and so I was oh, wow. just like I'm like holy crap that is that's just funny that I didn't even yeah. take the time to go look there and so um so yeah I might uh <laughs> I might go exploring and uh and pick up that tv I was telling you about because I'm like yeah you totally fine. should I did I should um mid-season brawl is this weekend which i'm so excited about so lots and lots and lots here's the storm coming up so oh yeah yeah baby it's gonna be, it's awesome. gonna be good yeah so good oh that's cool <laughs> you gotta love that urban exploration every once in a while and I'm so that's bad one thing at it i'm so bad at it well you know i am too because i've lived in little rock for this year will be nine years mm -hmm. and there's parts of it, thankfully, due to what I do for work, I get to see a lot more of it now because I'm driving all over the city. Yeah. So there's a big chunk of the cities of the city that I'd never seen before. You know, I'll say, oh, that looks like a pretty good restaurant. I'll have to remember that one. Or like, oh, that's a really, you know, <laughs> for us, it's like, that's a really nice gas station. The bathroom's really clean there. <laughs> it doesn't smell like pee all the time in there. That's a sketchy bathroom gas station. Don't eat there don't go to the bathroom there it's grungy so <laughs> that's the kind of thing like i know where all the good bathrooms are in little rock as far as gas stations go so <laughs> you know if you're ever when in little rock arkansas and you have to go and fill up gas at the same time send marco in send a send me a message yeah you're like i'm here where's the good where's the good poop place <laughs> marcona's new website is where should i pee <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, let's see that may take 
Where should I pee? Dot com. <laughs> okay, the IP address could not be found. Oh, it go. doesn't exist. So it may be open. <laughs> you just need to buy it. Start start having yep. people share. Like it'd be a crowd. This see, like we're making a new business right here. It is a crowd sharing platform for <laughs> locations of good restrooms for you to stop and pee at. <laughs> so so I I I, go I googled where should I poop. And a BuzzFeed article poop, uh, popped up and said, 14 places you have to poop at before you die. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so BuzzFeed. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. The first one is this one-way outhouse. It's like a... It's a... It's, it's a it's like one of those like cop show mirrors where it looks like a mirror on one side, but you can see through it. Yeah. The outside looks like a mirror, but when you get inside, you can see everybody outside. It's it's like a window. Oh, God. So you can see everybody else outside, but they can't see you while you're going. That's funny. That's really weird. Which, geez, that's just. <laughs> Who needs a one-way mirror in a toilet? Like, what? Well, I mean, it. well, I think it was an artist did it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can put the little. It sounds like a Shia LaBeouf like art exhibit. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. look at this. The one way outhouse. Yeah. Oh my lord. They're like, oh, that's the outside. And then you see the picture of the dude. Oh my <laughs> god. And he can see yeah. everybody. That's weird. Yeah. I don't know if I would that would be I would be so nervous. <gasps> the bottomless bathroom? I've seen that one before. That one. That's that's kind of like at the, the top of the old Sears Tower, Willis Tower. Now uh, they've got the bottomless thing where you can just step out. Oh my god! Uh, Fifteen stories. Oh my god! She, she's Louise. The urine-controlled video game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the underwater bathroom is cool. Oh, that is cool. The waterfall bathroom. That's oh, that's that's cool. super cool. Eco-friendly. It's in Milwaukee. So clean. Huh. Wow. The vertical bathroom? That's weird. Uh, that is very weird. Huh. Minimalist of the egg toilet. Oh, goodness. <laughs> the ski jump toilet? Look at that. That's so freaky. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the space bathroom oh yeah wow that's nuts <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> that's a very interesting article um welcome yeah. to the show folks <laughs> <laughs> I chat room. find out places you have to poop at <laughs> well it started with you talking about the good and the bad places to go pee in little rock so yeah that's true i did say that this is the good restroom. This is the bad restroom. I'm serious. I don't. I. I can't imagine that nobody's made an app for this yet. Yeah. It's, that is funny. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Oh my goodness. If you're here, chat room, you are quiet tonight. What is going on with you guys? Did Did Twitch chat break? No, because you used it. Yeah, I used it. I know we've got people in the chat room, but I have not seen anybody talking yet. Yeah. Where are you people? I ain't seen nobody talking yet. Y'all, y'all start talking now. Start doing your thing now. <laughs> uh, they have something. There they are. Hi, guys. Hey, yeah, there they are. Hi, guys. You just got here. Okay, you're you're fine. Um, You missed the, uh, <laughs> you missed the discussion about the places that you have to use the toilet at. Like, <laughs> there was a nice little BuzzFeed article that Marconin linked, and we got to run yep. through that a little bit. Those were some weird, weird toilets. And I just want to know who has the brain power to think about weird toilet design for people. I, You know, I, I it's got to, there, there's got to be some job description out there where this person, you know how they design cars, like they'll have the little clay model and they'll sculpt it and they'll do all the detail work. I imagine that there's a person somewhere that works somewhere that is like sculpting toilet designs and, and it, with clay and just, you know, just spending their, all that's their craft. Yeah. 
Yeah. Their craft about where I crap. <laughs> dad can't compete with the poop talk. I agree, dad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Are... the elaborate Japanese toilets. Yes. Yeah, like they'll they'll like cleanse you and and all of that no toilet paper needed. Yeah. They'll tell you a joke. <laughs> they'll... <laughs> <laughs> they'll make your lunch you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah that have a good day <laughs> have a good day enjoy yeah as you stand up it says have fun storm in the castle oh my or whatever you can just customize it <laughs> i don't know all right so let's it's... test some sounders and make sure let's see what do i want today like this one but i was gonna bring like a pizza we're gonna we just didn't have pizza we we're gonna have pizza. We we're gonna have pizza. I didn't have pizza for dinner though. I had taco pasta for dinner. Taco for pasta sounds yummy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, rotini noodles and then you just make taco meat, beans taco and, meat. Yeah. And, and a little bit of cheese. And I I put salsa in there to kinda just to hold it all together. It was nice. really good. Nice. That sounds so good. Look at all these great people. Brandy Flair, Erlina, Solo Mio. Welcome, you guys. We're about ready to get started and do the thing with the stuff. That thing that we do. Yes. Every Thursday. At, at least one out of every seven days. <laughs> so, can Japanese toilet totally <laughs> give you Hearthstone play advice? And yes, Arlena, when you make a live show and we're talking about poop. We'll yeah. You know. Well, you could say crap. I mean, we're talking about crap, too, but... We're, yeah. we're... <laughs> so tis what it is. You're just going to have to deal <laughs> with our sparkling toilet bowl personalities. <laughs> yes. Uh, All right. We've tested a sounder. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Le folks, let's go and get you ready checked. Let's do this. Ready check time. Ready check time. Dun, dun, dun. Ready check time. Ready check time. Are you guys ready for a pool? I hope so. I do not I'm see, going. I don't see a Draven Dresden yet, so there might be need for somebody to start, start compiling show titles. Uh-huh. We're going to put all that on you. You, listener. <laughs> you, sir, sir or madam. You see this? We're pointing at you. <laughs> you know, I, I was looking on Twitter real quick the other day, and they had some advice for Twitch streamers, and it's put googly eyes on your camera so that you can practice, you know, looking at somebody. Yeah. And it also looks like they're amazed and astonished at whatever you're saying. So that's an idea. I may have to go to, I may have to go get some googly eyes. googly eyes on your camera well yeah i mean i um so my camera is right below like right above where i look so it looks like i'm looking at you guys but i'm yeah. not quite looking at you guys so <laughs> <laughs> well i've got jewels on the on my monitor like right underneath yeah. my camera so that i'm usually talk. i'm looking at her when i'm talking so that it Looks but I'm like never I'm looking. looking at him because I, I, he's nope. got a side camera. So he sees me looking at the main camera the whole time. So it's like, I will talk to Marconin, but I'm never actually looking at him. Oh, goodness. That's so <laughs> weird. She's always looking like this. Like she's talking to me like this all the time. Yo. And then she just turns and looks. It's almost like, you know, must be some kind of hot tub time machine. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that where they just break the fourth wall like, oh, they can see me. <laughs> Running away now. <laughs> they know. <laughs> ah! All right. Ready check has been performed. The folks are prepared. And uh, all right. I think we're ready. Are you ready? Yes. This is number 274. Yes, that's correct. I've got that noted. Okay, episode 274 of Torrent Think Tank records in 3, 2, 1. You're listening to Torrent Think Tank, the podcast about the Blizzard gamer 
behind the keyboard. It's episode 274 of Torrent Think Tank. Today is Thursday, June 7th, 2018. It's 8.14 p.m. Central Time. We have had our little time to chat with the chat room, and now we are recording the live show. My name is Jules, and with me, as always, is the man with the swirling hands. It's Mark Honan. It's like a low-budget Doctor Strange. <laughs> kind of moving my hands around casting spells. And the spell today is to get you to listen to Tar and Think Tank. And since you're here, it worked. Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. <gasps> I, I, I need, a, I need a, a gasp sounder or something like that. Yeah. Yes. <gasps> That's it's incredible. So magical. How did you do it? You're magical and the magic. powerful. Yes. Welcome <laughs> to the another episode of Tor and Think Tank. You know, the show we have, we do every week on Thursday nights for um, 274 times. So, uh, Mark Owen, how is you? How is stuff? How is life? What is happening? Stuff is stuff. Life is life. And things are going, man, they're going pretty good. I, uh, I applied for a promotion at work yesterday. Ooh. One that I've been, uh, I've, I, it's the next step up you know, from where I'm at. So it's the next logical place for me to move, uh, not physically move, just uh, basically I'll be doing what I do now, but just on my own and, yep. you know, and then having helpers underneath me doing it. So it's, it's a step up in responsibility, but it's also potentially step up in pay. So there we go. So that's Yay. the main thing that's happened lately. So I'm excited about that. Um, hopefully we'll see where that goes and I can report back some positive things in a few weeks. We'll see though. That's so. awesome. And that was the thing, like when you, uh, when you accepted this change of role a couple, you know, mm -hmm. a year ago now, um, mm -hmm. you know, the nice thing was that there were opportunities for upward mobility for you and, mm -hmm. uh, which is what you didn't have at your old job. So that's really, nope. <laughs> that's so awesome that an another, upward mobility opportunity has opened and you can go for it so i wish you all the luck i know you're going to do Thank great you. it's going to be super cool <laughs> oh yeah well I, i'm very hopeful and so are my coworkers. and it's it's just it's been a good past uh past week at work things are things are very busy mm -hmm. because one of our guys is moving across the country so we're going to be losing him so we're it's like just the three of or four of us are trying to take on the entire area around little yeah. rock and it's just stretching is pretty thin but it's still fun i still really enjoy it so yeah i'm very lucky very blessed to have uh the job i have right now and That's uh awesome. yeah so things are going really good on that front um not a whole gosh i'm trying to think of anything oh yeah i got my mage tower appearance done you did so it that's done yes we got that done oh like on sunday i think when it started i was finally able to get it done so thankfully i'm done with that so other than leveling uh, allied races, I'm pretty much done with Legion of doing anything like yeah. <laughs> really big or challenging. I'm like, I'll do the mount things like I'm, I'm working on the hunter class mount. And then after that, I'll need to do the shaman and then the druid. And then I think I've got them all mm -hmm. something like that. Oh, and the warrior. So I've got like, four more to do, but I'm just going to kind of I'm taking those at a leisurely pace. So okay. no big stress about it. Um I also need to order. My, I, I need to order my collector's edition for Battle for Azeroth. I need to do that this weekend because yeah. I keep forgetting and I don't want to miss one because I have everyone since Cataclysm back there, and I don't want to break the streak. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you gotta have that collector. Have to. Yep. <laughs> Hashtag collector. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, uh, speaking of collecting, um, our friends Bim and RJ. Uh, for my birthday, they sent me Funko Pop uh, like collector sleeves, like plastic ones, and so I put some of my more rare ones in those sleeves. So thank oh, you nice. again for that awesome present last month. I finally got a bunch of them in there, so thank you for that. Super cool. Yeah, but nice. that's pretty much it for the last week for me. Not uh, compared to I know that you've got a lot of stuff in the hopper and that you're working through. So uh, yeah, what a uh, oh. what little bit of stuff is going on in Jules Land up north. So I can't talk about everything yet, but I can talk about some mm -hmm. of it, which is great. So um, let me start with the not so <clears throat> the not so great news, I guess. It's just it's not bad news. It's just kind of a big change. And I haven't really talked about it 
spe- like specifically on the show when I thought and I probably should do that. Um, so with the changes in the job for me, um, you know, one of my major responsibilities was to be uh, the guild master of Convert to Raid. And mm-hmm. I have not been playing WoW for over a year. And so when when we, when Pat and I talked about the situation changing and that my contract would be ending, I just, I thought about it and I talked to him the next day and I just said, I think I need to turn the guild leadership over to you because I'm, I'm not excited to play WoW anymore. And with all of these changes, it would be a good time for me to let my, was it 12 year, 12 year WoW subscription expire. Mm. It makes sense. It's yeah, it makes sense. It's bittersweet. It hasn't actually expired yet. It expires at the end of June because I was paying for it in six month blocks to try to save money, oh, of okay. course. So um expires at the end of June. And um and I had turned over the the leadership to Pat um a couple weeks ago. And I kept not saying anything on the show, and I'm like, why am I not saying anything about it? Because it just feels weird. Um World of Warcraft was the reason that this show even had a a concept. Um, Why it even started in the first place. Now, at this point, it doesn't need WoW to survive, but it's this kind of like, I kind of equate it to like when my parents moved out of my childhood home. Like, it's just like, you know, they have a great home right now and it's great to come visit, but it's not, it's not the childhood home. And, um, you know, Torrent Think Tank will always be um, who we are as we are right now. But um, the the origin came from that's that's the childhood home. Like it's just like it's going away, and so yeah, you know, it just made no sense for me to keep paying for something that I wasn't playing. And I made the decision that I wasn't going to buy Battle for Azeroth, which was a really tough decision to make, but I made it. So. So end of an era and, yeah. you know, a little bit hard to, to kind of wrap my head around all that. I mean, that's a, that's the longest time I've ever played a game in my entire life. Yeah, know, for, for sure. Um, so, yeah, that's the that's the sadder news, but not really sad. It's just, you know, it, it's just the, um, <laughs> the the not so fun news that. Oh, wow. That's really that's big changes. Um, yeah, but we'll switch to some more happy news. Um, so I participated in the Heroes Charity Brawl last Saturday. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. That is right. Um, so if you, if excuse me, if you hadn't heard about it, the Heroes Charity Brawl was a fundraiser for the Make a Wish Foundation, put together by um, some of the podcasters in Heroes of the Stormland. So like Lords of the Storm and Into the Nexus and Core um, and um, in a couple of like the Heroes Forge and, and a couple of different um, podcasts. And I was invited to come along. Um, Wicked Kitten in our chat room came in and helped out as well. And that was really cool. Um, and we were we had a goal of raising uh, $5,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation and we raised, I think, fifty three hundred dollars or something crazy wow. like that. Um, That's awesome! It was insane, um, and I had a, I had such a good time. It was a long day, but it was a fun day, and we did great things for kids. So very, very excited by that, and it was really neat to be a part of that. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, that was that was so funny because every um, every time I would hear Scott Johnson from Core. Uh, advertise for it he would be like and we have ladies on the team now ladies are gonna be here <laughs> like it was this marvel <laughs> of thing we have two ladies and then we wound up having three of us and so it was it was pretty funny <laughs> 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 made me laugh every time so in our in our dm discussions uh, with the group i said it was because we raised that money because of all the ladies right scott <laughs> and he's like of course like yes oh yeah that was cool <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> great job for everybody. It was done super well. Um, I, I adore John Jagger, and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's just so damn funny. Um, oh, yes. And, and Bo Schwartz, and those guys are just great. So, um, so that's cool. And then um, – the daily flash briefing um, that we're doing, the the esports daily podcast, which is the kind of two to three minute long esports headline show. Um, I've been doing that for now. This is a week and a half, and it's awesome, and it's doing really well, and I'm super stoked by that. Um, so that's been going really well. And though I can't say much more than this, um, we will be announcing our roster for Femme Ferocity on Monday. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. We have a roster and we have players and they're awesome. And uh, and I spent today interviewing coaches. And so it was just like, this is happening, guys. It's happening. So, so oh, stoked. So cool. So excited. And if you guys hadn't seen it, it actually came out last Saturday. Um, Steph and I were interviewed for Eurogamer. That's right. That was really cool. Um, yeah, I, I was just like, I knew it was coming and I couldn't say anything about it until it came out. But, um, the article was really, it was a really well done article. And, uh, so if you don't see it, just go and search for Eurogamer Femme Ferocity and you'll find it. It was a really, it was a good article. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's the first time I've ever been interviewed for like a large gaming publication. So I was a little like, oh boy, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> so but very, very neat stuff. So lots of good things that are happening and lots of forward movement. So things are things are good. They're chaotic. I've been, you know, stuff I can't really talk about right now, but it's hopefully soon. Um, and lots of decisions should be made. Urf. So <laughs> decisions, decisions, decisions. Decisions, decisions. Yes, exactly. So. That's my update for the week. And uh, we have a discussion topic that we're going to do that uh, Mark Honan came up with. So we're going to. Yay. We're gonna, <laughs> he's like, oh, uh, yay. So let's, yay, uh, yeah. let's play the bumper and we'll get in it. Let's kick around some. <laughs> uh, ideas, not gnomes. Oh. Ouch. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Normally, I introduce the topic. I am going to let you do oh, it Lord. this time because <laughs> this is a suggestion that came from Marcona, and I think it's a good one. It's one that we're going to roll up our sleeves into and get get digging in. So go for it. Mm -hmm. So we have – okay, see if I can phrase this right. There, there's been – especially with a lot of things recently in – the media and in uh, social media, there's this, I, you know, some things have happened where people will say something publicly and as a result, they either get fired or they get ridiculed immediately. And it got me to thinking um, about this idea of, you know, how, you know, in the U.S. we have the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, all that stuff. But how does that extend you know, uh, kind of my 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 line of, of thinking is freedom of speech is not freedom from consequences of that speech. And so we kind of what we kind of took this idea and molded it. And so today we're going to be saying we're going to be talking about uh, freedom of like the First Amendment, freedom of speech when it comes into play with the workplace, what you should say, what you shouldn't say, what's the consequences. And my goodness, this is a slippery slope. And, you know, so. That's kind of the gist of it, because a lot of things have happened. I mean, uh, stuff like this happens all the time, but it's kind of they got concentrated all in one like the last two weeks or so, because I will say the news has taught me two things over the last two weeks, what the word feckless means and who Valerie Jarrett is. And for those of you who are not up to up, up to news, uh, actress Roseanne Barr, who does that revival show, Roseanne. Uh, made a comment uh, referencing uh, one of uh, she was in the Obama administration, Valerie Jarrett, and made a crude remark that was taken as a racial slur. And for that, she her show on CBS was canceled. Was it CBS? CBS 
canceled yeah, nearly ABC. immediately. ABC. ABC within mm-hmm. within a day, it was gone, mm-hmm. just gone. Just yeah. nope, you're done. You know, just nuked. And then a day or two later, on TBS, it's another station. Uh, there's a show uh, by Samantha B, who's a who's a comic. And uh, she called the uh, Ivanka Trunk, the president's daughter, a feckless C word, which is a really, really bad word that you, pejorative you use against women. Mm-hmm. Um, and it elated cheers from her audience and it was just celebrated. But then a lot of people kind of like, that's a really strong word to use against like the president's family. And TBS stood behind her and there's no repercussions. Mm-hmm. Just just a lot of public, you know, uh, public outcry seeming to lean on one side of the political spectrum. And it just got me to thinking about the idea that a lot of people think they have free speech when you really you do, but you don't. And I think the, the main thing I think of when it comes to this is there's really, you know, there's two types of free speech. I think a lot of people can think about it. There's the the constitutional free speech in America, which says that you can say whatever you want. There are some stipulations like you inciting actions of violence against others, fire in a movie theater or an airplane, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The government can't keep you from saying your mind. That's what the First Amendment truly is. But then there's the idea of the cultural freedom of speech, where you can say whatever you want, no consequences, it's a free country, you can do what you want, you do you boo-boo, which is not entirely correct Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people mix the two together because uh we've you know you can be banned from twitter for saying a lot of bad things or facebook for saying a lot of bad things you are exercising your free speech but the main reply to that is twitter is a public it's a it's a private company right they have jurisdiction it's their servers you're saying this stuff on they can take you out if they want to not take you out but Thing. Yeah, which is true. It it's, is true. It's true. The the thing about it is like I. So if if you want to translate it into what the culture is that we live in in gaming culture, so mm-hmm. let's pick uh, the stuff that we're most familiar with: a Discord server, a guild. Mm-hmm. You know, we set rules. We yep. have a culture. We have a um, you know, a way of speaking. I. And, and you know, I can't tell you how many times I've worked with people in the CTR guild. We have a rule where we don't allow swearing in guild chat. And mm-hmm. it's like, so the rules are posted, the rules are stated, and it's like you agree to that rule when you sign up for the community. And then if you violate the rule, then we tell you, hey, that's not cool. And we've, you know, how many times have I, you know, freedom of speech and blah, 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 you can't do this. And it's like, well, yes, I can because you chose to enter my community. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of like, we, we kind of accept that as the world. And you know, everybody has their own spaces that they can go in and out of. When those spaces, those lines are violated, like taking Roseanne's situation, for example, mm-hmm. What she stated outside, you know, she represents a network. She represents ABC when she's on the network. She's, you know, they, they've they endorsed her by putting her on, on the network. And she says mm-hmm. something that people find, um, find like, racist. <laughs> I mean, that was, yeah. that was the thing. She was found to, what her statement was, is that she was racist. And ABC said, we're not going to let you be here anymore. Because yeah. that's that's our rules. That's our and but like go back like ten years ago, ten, fifteen years ago. Remember the Super Bowl? Remember the Super Bowl performance with Janet Jackson and Justin yeah. Timberlake? And do mm-hmm. you remember the one that when, started YouTube? Yep. The the the, <laughs> the 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 wardrobe malfunction where mm-hmm. the problem was is that it, it was like a, a a boob that was co- like with a nipple covered was exposed on air and people went berserk crazy yep. over over that that doesn't happen anymore like you could watch an abc show and you you know my point being is that those cultural norms those those 
what you can say, what you can't, changes with the times and the way that the culture is then and now. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the words can change and the meanings of those words change, you know, just through culture, you know? You can't say the word retarded anymore. You can't yeah. say that word. Like, when I was younger, and I'm not trying to offend anybody because I know that that word is very charged right now. I'm just using it as an example. But when I was little, when we talked about someone who is now what we would say mentally disabled, they used to use mentally retarded. That was the word that was used as that an was accepted like the term. Yeah, that was like a clinical description. Correct. And so it is a very, it's, you know, what has happened in that situation with the Roseanne versus the Samantha B situation? I kind of I kind of equate it to the um, the that the stations that were there had to make decisions based on a public outroar outcry because that's yeah. really what it is. It's like it's reaction to people going, no, 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 that's okay, that's not okay, that's not okay, that's not okay, and both sides of the political spectrum did that exact reaction to the other party. Yeah. And so, you know, you'll notice that I'm not going to get into my personal thoughts on this. I'm just going to talk yeah. about it from a, you know, logic standpoint, because it just, I don't think you can logic this out. I don't think you can. It's like yeah. the rules are just not, they're not easily defined. Well, they're not. And, and with like the Roseanne thing, that's like a split decision tweet instant. It's all over the world. Yeah. And with the Samantha B, that's script writers, that's rehearsals, that's taping, that's review, that's approval. Then it goes out on the air. That thing had to go through like five or six gatekeepers, and they're like, okay. But you and don't know that. It, you actually don't well, know. She could have ad libbed that. She could have ad libbed it, but she's they a taped it earlier in the day. Yeah, yeah, but they tape it earlier in the day. They don't, they, that's not live. So there was a lot, there's a couple of gatekeepers at least. That's in true. that like, ah, maybe we shouldn't. That's a little strong, you know, yeah. a personal attack. Eh. And the same, like, you know, I'm not going to dig deep into the political thing. I didn't like either situation. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I was like, oh, she got canceled. Well, yeah, I expected it. You know, I expect repercussions when you say something like that. Intentional, not intentional. You said it. It's out in the world. Everyone saw it. Okay. Same thing kind of happens in any workplace. When you when people know that you work there, you represent them. I mean, when I'm when I am out in the world, I represent my company all day, every day when I am out there wearing the uniform, driving the vehicle, no matter what. So, even when the clients aren't even in the room, I make sure I watch what I say. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to joke around too much with the guy. All the all the people on my team, we get along great. We have fun. We tell jokes. We kind of like rib each other a little bit. But I don't we don't get way too far out because we represent a brand. We represent a company and I they can broad brush the entire company on the next five words I say when I'm in their home. Yeah. And there's even an example uh, when I first started at where I worked, someone complained on Facebook. They just posted on Facebook like, man, work's really sucked today. I can't believe that this happened. They made me do this, this, that and this. Oh, it was a rough day. You know, just venting like you might do with a family member or a friend. The next day, one of the managers pulled them into the office and was like, hey, you know, if you really feel that way, you can leave. Yeah, like, you can go like, that. you know, and this is 10 years ago. Before yeah. they started man like asking you for your Facebook profile when you started joining up at a company, you know, because yeah. that's like the new thing is like, I want your Facebook, I want your Twitter, give me all your social media. They're doing it now. Like I'm, yeah. I've been applying for jobs and they're asking me for my my Twitter, my LinkedIn, like all that stuff, and it makes you know it makes you pause. Like if you do, like, do you include it on the application? Or do you not? And then, you know, say, well, I don't want you to see it, which could be, you know, it's just that really tough yeah. decision. And it's why I I have, like, I've given myself kind of a timeout in terms of saying anything negative about what's happening in the news, like, for, for probably a good now year, at least. Mainly just because, I mean, I it doesn't mean that I have 
stopped having feelings about what's happening in the news. Oh, um, yeah. I have a lot of them. But um, my energy is focused on staying positive, you know, cat pictures and chain mail things and happy <laughs> esports stuff. And, you know, and it's, yeah, it's curated. Yeah, it's made sure that I'm not spreading negativity. But it's me trying to make sure that I keep my head in a certain place. Like, you know, I'll admit this part. I'll admit this. I cannot list. I have made it a point that I cannot listen to her president speak in any context. I will not listen to anything that he says ever. Like I, you know, if there's a video, I won't play it uh, if because I do not <laughs> want to hear it. And it literally is kind of me sticking my head in the sand a little bit, just because the emotional, like I don't want to say something that I'm that I would regret. I don't want to mm -hmm. say something that I just don't. And so that's how I deal with it. And the the harder part of like when you're you're having like a conversation with people at work, how easy it could be for somebody to just state something that could just like light your flame up. Like just, you know, say something or a customer, like if a customer, holy crap, said something politically charged that you didn't agree with like um good lord <laughs> yeah well you know and it, it's kind of the same thing for me is that i'm in people's homes every day every day they're places of business and you know and we're you know and i you know i'm kind of very conversational i try to be i try to be very real you know nice and relax you know and very very friendly to everybody and one of the things that goes along with that is that they feel that they can talk to me and that's fine. I, I I will I will talk to people. You can ask my coworkers. They'll they'll push me on to the clients while while they actually get the work done because right. they're kind of they're more workers than talkers, and I'm yeah. a mix of both. And they'll talk about the news. They'll talk about political stuff, religious stuff. I had one uh, older gentleman in a retirement community. We're putting up a putting up some stuff, and he's like, "I got to ask you boys something. Are y'all Christian boys?" Wow. And and I and. As it happened, out of like the half dozen on the team, he got the two Christians in the group in the in the room. We're like, actually, sir, yes, we are. And he's like, well, good. At that, you know, and and you know, he talked a little bit, and he's like, you know, nothing bad, nothing inflammatory. Just like, oh, okay, conversation. I mean, it's the South, you know. It's but think about community. it for a second. Like, if that if it wasn't you and your coworker, and it was somebody else who wasn't mm -hmm. Christian, sure, that is and, like, oh. That just makes my yeah. skin crawl because, like, what would he have said? What would he have said to those guys if they were saying, "Yeah, you know, we like, don't know. You don't know." Yeah, we don't know, and that's in. And a lot of times, when it comes to political stuff, you know, whether I agree or disagree with them, I keep my comments very neutral because, like I said, I am representing a brand. I'm representing right. representing a multi-million or billion-dollar company, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes, left, right, or center. So yeah. I try to be as neutral as I can. You know, and just be very nice and smile and nod. And other people on the team who aren't religious, they smile and nod, and they have great conversations with people. You know, yeah. you know, just to try and keep it that way. But not everybody is like that, and that's the thing that yeah. I think we need to talk about a little bit, because we all know them. We all know the people who have the attitude: "Is I'm going to say what I think and damn the consequences," because I'm speaking my truth. Mm -hmm. And. Obviously, at work, that's not going to get you very far. That isn't. It, you know, you, you're not going to be in a position of baby customer facing. You may not even be somebody who, excuse me, somebody who can, like, communicate with other people very easily either. Um, you you're, know, not, most... you're not up for management material. <laughs> I'm sorry. True. But, <laughs> but let, I mean, you know, there are, I mean, you could, you could use the two, Ladies, as examples, the the two celebrities examples. I say my truth, and this is what it is, and damn the consequences. And mm -hmm. your statement when you opened this co this conversation was that freedom of speech is not freedom of from consequences. And mm -hmm. so, as I've gotten older, I've definitely, I've definitely been being become more tolerant of certain people who have that attitude as long as they as long as they are 
at least willing to have a conversation around their beliefs. Because the, the, the That's thing, hard to find. It's very, very hard to find. That's and and so then so so usually what happens is like it's like you're just gonna spout your truth and I'm gonna go good luck with that <laughs> and just kind of move on and That's not interact. That's me every day on Twitter. Yeah, That's not not interacting with that. Um, yeah, I just I just blow past. I'm like, nope, not worth my time. Yeah, um, you know there there are the rare folks who can you know I'm gonna speak my truth and I'm gonna uh, you know yes I'm gonna engage you in conversation, but I think that the worst honestly the worst ones for me. And I think that's the hardest thing for me to digest is the is people who have hypocrisy as that as that method. So it's like I'm going to speak my truth and damn the consequences, but if you speak the truth, you are not allowed to speak the truth. No, you exactly. are not. And the yeah. hypocrisy of that I think hypocrisy is one thing that will like Someone who like stands like I'm gonna die on this hill if it kills you know or, like, I mean die this yeah. hill if it kills me but you know what I mean um, <laughs> I'm gonna stand on this hill if it, and I'm going to defend it until it kills me and then they stand on the hill and then it's like oh no that hill really wasn't that wasn't worth it and it's like yeah come on like, <laughs> seriously <laughs> that's the stuff that really does not sit well with me um yeah because i hate hypocrisy i hate it uh, you know it's just be if you're going to be genuine and, be genuine yeah and un just unfairness you know a spade a spade would no a spade is a spade no matter where you look at it from because i've i've had conversations with people they say hey you're not allowed to do this they're not you know in a, like a general sense like hey let's stop them they can't do this I'm like, well, actually, what about the same thing? It's just right here. Mm -hmm. They can do this, but that's not okay. Well, no, that's different because this. You know, it's very, you know, hot button issues. And we got into a long discussion and then they said some things that are wildly inaccurate. And I was like, well, we cannot have a constructive discussion. So I'll see you later. Yeah. You know, well, and the, the idea of like, there's. You're talking the, like blanket statements with no, like, no definitive proof. Right. Well, the kind of? the the thing in question is is someone someone was making fan art and made like Lucio from Overwatch more lighter skinned than he is in the game as fan art. Okay. They're like doing gender bends and stuff. And Fabelina had this thing where she did the like a fairy uh, fairy Farah or or Symmetra. Yeah. And people rained down upon her because she wasn't dark enough. They didn't. She didn't make Symmetra ethnically color like the correct ethnic color enough it wasn't she wasn't indian enough for them or okay. or you know and they said well they can't do this you can't make lucio white it's like wait it's fan art that's like they're like expressing their craft and they've got a whole list of other examples how is that not okay and then i started showing examples like here's a black tracer here's all these other examples people are just creating art they're making really cool variations why is that not? Why is this okay, but that's not? And then it's like, well, because white people, essentially. And they started going down this big rabbit hole of reverse racism and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, all right. Yeah. If Can't, you have, I, if, I was like trying to be constructive. I'm like, okay, well, I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. And it just did not go. And I was like, okay, well, clearly we are not going to uh, come to any sort of middle ground or anything. So uh, talk to you later. Yeah, and the thing is that there is – it's very difficult sometimes to have the rules be fair and equal. And that's the – like, so if you haven't already seen it, guys, please go out and watch the Netflix series Dear White People. I binged that two weeks ago, I think. I watched it. It's like they're half an hour um, episodes, and I watched – in this two seasons, and I watched the whole thing. And – at the center of one of the like the the first season um, is the controversy that has happened actually in um, gaming as well, where a white guy was singing along with the lyrics of a rap song and said the N word, which was in the lyrics of the song. And this has happened in this has happened. It in happened gaming like streets. last. Well, it happened at a concert like last week. 
Did it happen last week? At a rap week? concert. Yeah, they pulled a, uh, like a teenage white girl up, and she was singing along, and she did the lyrics, and he stopped her and was like, no, and the cheer, the crowd was booing at her. And yeah, so yeah, like, same same kind of thing. Again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pass judgment on any of that. I'm just pointing yeah. out the fact that the rules are very. It's just it's unclear and it's very sometimes very difficult. It's it's very difficult to, some for if if you just don't know if you're ignorant to yeah. it. Is the rule there or is it not? And um, so the 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 approach that i that i try to take when it comes to people is to accept that there is going to be situations that i'm not going to understand there's going mm -hmm. to be social norms and rules that i'm going to do my best to make sure that i know um and but i know that i'm not always going to be well versed in everything you know, mm -hmm. oh yeah, <laughs> like what the what the the rule is. So in that situation of the the girl on the stage singing along with the lyrics and getting booed, like she's never gonna do that again because she was now socially shamed for what she had done and thought it was gonna be okay for her to say that. It, she thought it was okay. It's not. Um, so yeah, learning experience, but. Social shaming is a very powerful and damaging tool. <laughs> and like, yeah. we live in a world, we live in a world where we actively just try to avoid being socially shamed on every post that we make on social media. Like, you know, I, I, I stand a pretty good chance of being okay when I post a picture of my chainmail stuff or um, or, or my cat or, <laughs> or the yeah. fact that I saw a hummingbird at my feeder. Um, I'm pretty okay. I don't think I violated any social norms by doing that. And I feel pretty confident in there, but did Fabelina have that moment where she thought that her, um, her fairy Lucio would, would draw such negative attention? I'm absolutely like, I, I'm confident in saying she probably didn't. And yeah. I mean, it didn't cross her mind at all. And my thing is, is why, you know, in those instances, why are, why are you policing art? Yeah. It's, it's, it's art showing appreciation for the genre, for whatever it is. You know, people do gender bends and race bends on things all the time. Yeah. And I was just, all reading, the time. I was reading and it's an just Instagram. just embracing it all. Yeah. And I was in, reading an Instagram post uh, today. Um, it was, it was a black cosplayer who was saying, don't shame me and tell me that I'm wrong for cosplaying white characters. Uh, you know, it, this, well, it, yeah. this is for everybody. And, it's you know, everybody. Yeah. And, no matter who you are. Exactly. And that's the thing where it's like, okay, the, the rules are just, it's going right back to, you know, going right back to even like, there have been things that I have heard comedians say where I've gasped out loud and said, I can't believe they just said that and nobody just like threw shit at them. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. because comedians are, you know, especially in, 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 you know, they're, they're meant to shock you. They're meant to try to uh, they're, provoke they're, thought. They're the ones pressing against the borders of freedom of speech. They're the ones that are holding, like they can say things that are edgy, that are controversial. That's mm -hmm. kind of their niche. That's kind of what they're there for. And, you know, the, yeah, there's things that I've heard comedians say that I'm like, wow, that is that is in, that is interesting. And I would never say that in a million years. I would never say that in a million years. Yes. And like you. Yeah. You, Mark Honan, like standard person of like living in Little Rock, Arkansas, would not say. But you um, but you have a comedian that that pushes the boundaries and pushes the line. Mm -hmm. But and that's the thing is like everybody's looking to push the line these days. They're looking to see where the line is, where the line should be. But the line is not in the same place that it was in 10 years prior or 20 years prior. Mm -hmm. And it makes it very hard to to know what's OK and what's not. I was I've been 
watching episodes of ER for the last few months. Like I've been, you know, I think I'm in, ep- in season nine now. Um, mm-hmm. But the early seasons, seasons one, two, three, were were made in like 1998 or something like that. Like, you know, mm-hmm. right before they were talking about before, like Y2K and stuff like that in those episodes. <laughs> and the differences in the the way that people talk to each other, like there's there was discrimination, sexual harassment, like things that you would never, ever, ever see now. And mm-hmm. and and it becomes like this. It was like a glaring siren almost to watch these episodes and see what was happening because I know now, like, we could never say some of that stuff. That would never happen. But it was like, it just was accepted back then. It was just how things were. And if you talk to your parents. That was the culture of norms, yeah. Yeah, if you talk to your parents, it would be the same thing. You go back to the days when they were younger, when they were children, the things that they could do and say are different than what we can do now. It's just, that is, the, the cultural line shifts and we have to shift with it. But sometimes the rules get rewritten as you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess like, so I think the, the biggest argument a lot of people will give you in these days is that the world is too politically correct, that we're mm-hmm. too afraid. Yeah, you can hear to, that a lot. Yeah, like you're too PC. This is too, you know, it's all PC crap, blah, 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 blah. And I honestly want to know because i don't even know how i how i would answer this but i'm curious because we'll probably just both do it do you wish things were the way they used to be or is it better the way they are now Hmm. that is a tough one i mean in in some respects you know things you know gosh i'm trying to trying to Put my brain around that one. Because, like, so let me add a couple <laughs> of, like, logs to the fire. So, sure. you know, when we were little, we used the term gay. When we were mm-hmm. little, I mean, you know, oh, that's so gay. He's so gay. You know, that kind of thing. And that was okay. That was not a problem. I used the word, I, I used also the word retarded earlier. That was another one where people mm-hmm. were just like, you know, Oh, he's just being retarded. And there's a song like the Black Eyed Peas sang a song about it. Let's get retarded. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> those of you on Top 40 Radio may know that as Let's Get It Started. Yeah, but they they're actuals. It. They did. They changed it That's because it was the PC thing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so and and so that's the thing. Like, would we would you want to see the world be more like it was before? Or just have it where it is now. You know, I, when it comes to stuff like that, I always like to err on the side of understanding and listening to people, like, on their side of it. Like, if I said something that somebody didn't like, you know, like, if I say something, like, for instance, my coworker won't say GD around me because he's agnostic, I'm, I'm a Christian, and that's, like, what that's Lord's name in vain territory, like, I, it's very rare that I'll even say that. And it's in like the just, I am royally ticked off if that comes out of my mouth. And he says, oh, I'm sorry, I won't say it. And I was like, well, you know, it's, I don't like hearing it all the time. But if I hear it like once in a great, you know, I'm glad he understands my point of view. And he's not policing his words. He's not changing. He's just being slightly, cons- he's being considerate for the people that's around him. Mm-hmm. Just like when you're at work, you kind of police and you're, you're a very understanding of the people around you. So in those in those instances, I would err on the side of just, you know, hey, if somebody says, you know, it's kind of like like the first person I was engaged to is 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 trans now mm-hmm. wasn't when I was engaged to them. But now they're a he or a him. And I respect that because, you know, I know them. They've asked and I'm like, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, I still care. I still care about them. It's one of one. Of, I haven't talked to him in a long time, but, mm-hmm. you know, just. Anytime I talk to him, I'm just very nice and polite. And, you know, I think that the world could use a whole lot more understanding. Yeah. Uh, and not these broad brush strokes that we get on both sides of political stuff. You know, I try to ride the line in the middle and see people on both sides. You know, I have my opinions one way or another, and that doesn't matter. But I just try to see people, you know, I try not to think about the big picture 
of things. I try to think of just the people I know and I care about. Yeah. You know, because I, I have straight friends. I have gay friends. My brother-in-law is gay and married. So I have two brothers-in-law. Mm-hmm. And they're great. And I love them. You know? Great. You know, I, I'm very happy for them, all this stuff. But I, I think it's... The way the way that it's gotten for people is with the internet and with all of it. it the way I could see people feeling that it's so uh, oppressive is that they can't say anything is their main... Because like I can't say anything. Every little thing I have to, you know, I get com- I, people come down on me for saying every little thing, and it's very jarring for people if they don't know, or if they, like you said earlier, they just don't know what's, you know. And it's very, you know, it's kind of like, oh, I can't say that. Okay, that's this. Okay, it's like trying to, it's like trying to walk down a road, and then all of a sudden the floor is lava, and now you have to try and tiptoe around the rocks and not get in the lava, and it's very disorienting. That's yeah. kind of, I don't know. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. And it's just, no, it it's like, sense. oh, we can't, you know. It makes like, sense. Like, yeah, just leave it. You so, know, but you can't leave. Here's my thought on, on the answer to that question. Sure. Um, in my, in my years of living now, um, you know, I've encountered a lot of different types of people. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, we live in a world right now where, at least in America, I mean, I'm going to say this specifically for America, that we do not know how to be honest and authentic about what it is we really feel. And a lot of times people don't understand what their emotions are because they were never taught how to process them. And I was having a conversation with my parents this weekend on on, uh, Skype And my dad was telling me about going out to dinner with some folks who just have a lot of a lot of anger about the world and that there's um, they, they describe them as that there's this like there's this laundry list of like grievances that these people hang on to Mm -hmm. and can they can list them at any time to you. It's like the memory of an elephant. Like you have like the grievances <laughs> that happened 10, 15 years ago that it's their it, it's their right to be able to like dump them all out on you because that's the grievances that they carry around instead of letting that anger and that pain go. You know, that's why Festivus needs to be more popular in the US. <laughs> the, the annual airing of grievances that would release the pressure. Yeah. But the thing about it was like, you know, my parents are saying it literally sucks the air out of the room. You don't want to be around them. And it drains you of all of your energy. Because these mm-hmm. are the, it, it's all about these emotions that have never been processed. And, it, you know, the stuff that everything, everybody else has done. There's no, like, it, you know, this is bad. This is bad because this person did this. This person did that. Like, imagine living like that. Imagine living life where all you do is be angry and sad and frustrated about everything that everyone has ever done to you to the point where that's all you can focus on. And it got me to really thinking about if we could have the ability, I mean, this is pie in the sky, but if we could have the ability to process our emotions, to be honest about them, even if it's like the hardest stuff in the world to actually acknowledge and, you know, and, and come to terms with, I think that the world would be a better place. I think there would be a lot less anger. There would be a lot less hate. There would be a lot less pain. And um, honestly, some of that, that, that anger and pain and hurt comes out in the way people express themselves. The way Mm -hmm. people express themselves to other people and to themselves. And that is why that is why we struggle with things as we do. We're very angry right now. Both sides of the political mm-hmm. spectrum are very angry and very hurt. And there is a lot of lacking of compassion and understanding yeah. and being willing to accept people. You know, I, I, I could go on like this forever, but... My function in this world now is to do my best around the people who I can make the best impact with. 
And those who I can't, I just, I've made a decision long, a long time ago that I'm just not, I'm not going to make my effort. I'm not going to exhaust myself trying to make an effort for people who don't want to receive the effort. Yeah. And, you know, someday they may, but they, you know, that's not my job right now. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's kind of similar for me. Like I will see things on social media and I was like, well, I disagree with that a hundred percent, but is it worth my time to bring it up or to express or ask or elaborate? And from the past expressions that they put on social media, it's like, well, no, because I, I, you know, if I say one errant thing or one disagreement, the chances are I might get crucified on social media and it not be an intent, not be anything close to what I was saying. So I just leave it all to be. I don't worry about it. I don't let it bother me because all I can do, like you said, is kind of a, you can make an impact on the people that you you will only work to impact the people that you can impact, that you can have the greatest impact with, that you can help. Yeah. And that's kind of the same boat I'm in. It's like, well, you know, you can't help everybody. You can't have an, you can't have a productive discussion with everybody. Mm -hmm. You can, you could stand on that hill and you could say, am I prepared to die on this hill for this cause, for this point that I want to make? And I can't think of very many of those hills that I would rather die on than just like go and live my life. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, a couple of years ago, I had someone ask me um, how I didn't get like so riled up when people said dumb, you know, the way they said it is, how do you not get riled up when people say dumb shit on the internet? <laughs> and and that, because this person had this compulsion to respond to it. And to make, you know, to tell them that they were wrong. And I just said, it's not worth my time. All it's going to do is get me upset because this person said something that upset me. And then I'm going to reply to it and it's going to keep me upset because they're going to reply back to me and say something that's going to upset me more. What What have I accomplished? I have done nothing but upset myself and nothing actually got resolved. And I just like, because you were, as you exactly said earlier, it's very rare to find the person who will say, I will die on this hill, but they will listen to a counterpoint to take them off the hill. (laughs) Yeah. Like I'm always up. I'm always up for a neutral, reasonable discussion. Like I've talked to coworkers, like when we're in the car for hours, you know, religion will come up every once in a great while and we'll have just a, you know, discussion like those hot button issues, yeah. they'll come up and we'll, you know, we'll just state our opinion. We'll do a little dialogue and we'll go to work yeah. like it. And, and they're still my friend. You know, I have friends on both sides of the political aisle. And that's because I, you know, there I'm not going to broad brush somebody, whether they check a D or an R every four, every fourth November or whatever. Or like that's not that's not who they are. That's part of it. Yeah. But that's not all of who they are. And so that's like, well. Yeah, I'm not going to broadly dr- judge somebody because there's parts of them I do like and I like hanging out with them and they're great. And they, you know, all this stuff. And so there's a level kinda... of respect there, though, you yes. know, it is because there's not the line to say like, so, you know, that you may disagree politically with your friend and you may and you and you both know it. So you agree to stand in your separate corners and not like punch each other not in the com- face over your beliefs. Exactly. Like, even if it does come up, even if like politics does come up and you disagree and stuff, you're not going to come to blows over it. You're not going to you're not going to ruin the friendship over it because there is that. Like you said, there is that agreement like, hey, that's not all of who you are. That's you. I still value you as a person. I still want you in my life. It was great so, when <laughs> I went to go visit our friend Ashanka Ash um, mm-hmm. and I stayed at, at his house and we had some great meals together and just really great talking. Like we couldn't be more opposite in terms of our political beliefs um, mm-hmm. and our religious beliefs. Like we're both like very, very different, but we could still have a, an amazing conversation, an amazing time because we talked about life and we talked yeah. about, you know, our, our mutual loves for gaming and things that we have in common and, and that kind of thing, which is awesome, you know? I know that he doesn't believe the same things that I do politically or religiously. And that's okay because Mm -hmm. I respect that he has his beliefs. 
and he has, then he respects that I have mine, that they don't match and we're not going to get over fisticuffs on it. Exactly. Um, and so that is something, you know, something, some way, somehow this world needs to heal our, our country. Definitely. It just needs to heal. And I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, so we just take our little corner of the universe called Torrent Think Tank and the things that we impact in our lives. And we spread our love and compassion that way. Yeah, it's not going to be somebody on Capitol Hill or in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue that's going to uh, heal wounds between people. It's going to be the people themselves. No, no one person will change, can change the entire society in that way. No. No one person can do that. That's not a responsibility we should foist on anybody. That's that's putting someone on way too high a pedestal. Mm -hmm. The most powerful person in our country is one person. Right. He is just a human being, just like everybody else. And they're not going to save us. The like, kind of like uh, what was it? Uh, Illidan said after uh, after Zira, after he killed Zira in Legion, and Turalyon was going to kill him. He's like, you know, he's like, there is no chosen one. We have to save ourselves. Yeah, you know, we can't rely on big pie in the sky people to fix the world. We have to do it ourselves. We have to pick up our shovels. We have to pick up our soup kitchen spoon ladles. We have to pick up, you know whatever it is in the world that you can do to do better and yeah. go out and do it. Exactly. And, you know, I, it's weird how we went from free speech in the workplace to this, but I think in a way it's like, I mean, it's all tied together, of course, but of course, because I mean, yeah, you can say whatever you want. And it reminds me of the Dave Chappelle skits, you know, when keeping it real goes too far, someone just speaks their mind. I'm keeping it real. I'm just expressing myself. Well, it can lead to bad consequences like getting your show canceled or having a bunch of people yell at you on social media. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, and of course, you can get fired if you say something mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yes, you can. Um, so don't say something mean. And, you know, if you have a friend that you have giant disagreements on, that's okay. Yeah. Well, as long as everybody is is within... Um, respectable limits and yeah. that's the thing so you know I'm, I'm going to bring up this last thing here and that is um, the recent situation um, that was that's going on on the internet where um, Kelly Marie Tran from Star Wars had deleted so all of her yeah so now you're saying that's oh so stupid God. you know the, the, no, yeah well you go ahead and finish yeah and I'll elaborate. like your, your reaction was instant because here's that that situation is like People in inundated her with such hateful comments since the since like the last Jedi came out, which was December, that she wound up deleting her all of her Instagram photos to stop the harassment and the hate on them mm -hmm. happening. And like your immediate reaction, I'm going to absolutely agree with it. Like all that was is hateful, intolerant behavior, and. Do we stand for that? No. Like, <laughs> but no. there's a lot of people right now that do. Yeah. I, it's it, the, and then why I said it was so stupid is like, guys, I didn't, I didn't like the last Jedi all that much. And I agree with a lot of the script decisions, a lot of the pacing, the decision that I agree. I didn't like it that, I mean, I liked it as a movie just to be thing, but it, it wasn't quite what I would have expected, sure. and there's parts of it I didn't like. Uh, but she's an actress. She's not really Rose. She didn't really kiss Finn and keep him from dying on crate. She's an actress. That's a job. Like, she was told to say something and given money to say it, and she said it. She's not really Rose, guys. She's an actress. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Like, but that's how far it mad, goes. That's how yeah, far I was it like, goes. Be mad at Ryan Johnson's directorial decisions. Be mad at Kathleen Kennedy for running Lucasfilm. Be mad at the people who designed, who made those decisions. Don't kill the messenger. But at Don't the same time, the it's still not okay for them to go to uh, you know Kathleen Kennedy and, and Ryan Johnson, all those people, and, and attack them. 
not attack personally. them. Personally, no. and, and no, that's, not personally. No, right? Like you have you you know we have we're allowed to have feelings about things, but the the you know death threats on the internet. I mean, I was just reading articles for Esports Daily, and one of the CS:GO players was tweeting about how he was going to practice so that he could avoid people sending him messages they were going to come and kill his family for a poor performance in a tournament an esports player like yeah. like that is that is the thing that makes me so sad is that that is what we have come to whether or not that it's always been there or not we're still dealing with it and it's like I, yeah it's just it's very very difficult it's diff like that behavior has to be stopped, but that person can say freedom of speech. Well, yeah, but then they can also have their accounts banned. Sure. For saying that. Sure. So they can get reported and blocked. Like I said, they can still they could still say it, but they're gonna get the consequences of it. You know, they're still the the hopefully I mean, the hateful stuff, I mean, and part of me thinks that the hateful stuff, maybe not was, wasn't was always there, but in a way it was underlying. Like, of course, before the days when you could tweet directly at a celebrity or an athlete, you know, if the game, if, if somebody blew the game, then you could be mad at the guy and be like, oh, I can't believe he, he you know, didn't make that three point shot at the buzz or buzz beater and, you know, win the playoffs. And, oh, he sucks. Oh, I hate him so much. And then you go to bed. No, you, you know they sent letters. You know they, they mailed see, letters. They could mail letters. Sure, they can mail letters. They you could mean, do stuff like that. But it's, it's just instantaneous easier. and it's the easy it's the ease of it. Yeah. I mean sending a letter sending a tweet is a whole lot less labor than it would be to get out your pencil and paper, write or type it, put on a stamp, lick the envelope, take it to the post office. I that takes it. energy and just and dedicated anger and angst at something. Sending a tweet is just like just like okay done ah, and and it's just that on just a title, just huge swath wave of it. Yeah, and so like and how just, do you stop ugh. that? Like you you know it's an instant gratification. Like you know throw your energy out to the universe, and it doesn't matter what what level of energy it is. Um, it's so easy to spread hate now. It is so easy mm -hmm. to do that and so i think that's my point is that we live in an age now where it is so much easier to spread hate that is it more prevalent because it's there's ease of access to do it possibly possibly you know it's so. just it's it, it's a shame because just as easy as we can spread hate, we can spread love, too. Mm -hmm. And the bad thing is that the hate, you know, the, the hate will rise to the top because it's, you know, it's a negative. It's, it's not a reinforcing emotion. It's a negative yeah. one. So it takes us back to the original ending thought here, which is to say, you know, the way that we try to in, in, incite change is by um, demonstrating it in ourselves and by... Mm -hmm you know, leading by example, by treating each other with respect. And one of the other things that I that I have become very aware of is that we just don't always have that awareness when we're younger. We get it when we're older. The the it's it's actually like brain development stuff when you just mm -hmm. literally don't see that perspective of life in in your teens 20s early 20s that kind of thing you get older and you start seeing it more you start gaining mm. perspective that's like and and don't quote me because i don't know the studies but that's biologically proven that there's developmental changes that happen as you age in your mm -hmm. in your brain function so the the way that i feel like we have to combat it is by is, is by focusing on it in a young age, in, in, in the situations of talking to young people and teaching them how to treat each other um, yeah, and, and how to interact with each other and where to, what is a good thing to say and what is a bad thing to say. And heaven forbid, like, there is ever a, there's never a rule book. Like, you can't, you can't yeah. give a child a <laughs> rule book and say, you just have to learn by, you have to learn by failing. 
which yeah. sucks. But... It does. Well, and another thing that sucks nowadays is if you fail, it's worldwide at an instant. Can Before, be. if you said something, if you said something dumb in a classroom, that's two dozen. You know, uh, that would eventually go out. You know, might go out to the whole school. They'd make fun of you. But if you, if you say something dumb on the internet, it's there and is mm-hmm. there forever. And then, ten, twenty years later, you've you've moved on as a person. You've become, you know, this shining example of humanity and then someone reaches under a cushion and be like hey you remember you said this dumb crap and yeah. now you get ridiculed for it and so it's a lot harder it is so i think harder. being i think for kids it's a lot more important for parents to be proactive my nephew he's almost 12 he's got his first cell, first smartphone a few months back and my sister was like and she told him she's like i paid for that phone that is my phone i will get it from you whenever i want and I can look at it and do whatever I want with it. So whenever I said the only, she said the only time, the only way that he's getting that phone is if it's hers whenever she wants it, and she can police what what he says to other people. He's a big kind of gamer and plays a plays a lot of the um, a lot of like like Roblox, like first person shooter, Call of Duty style, but yeah. kitty skin games. So I mean, no doubt he's probably hearing some really bad stuff on there yeah, on the yeah. voice comms. Yeah. But he know he knows the bad words and he knows what to say and what not to say. And he'll even tell my sister that they're saying bad words, but he's not going to repeat them. So I think as long as parents are very proactive about what, you know, and yeah, it's it's ever moving target. What is socially acceptable to say? Sure. But if you have a couple other sets of hands at the wheel, that might help steer them in a better direction and keep them more at least aware of it. It's not that you teach them what they can and can't say. It's teach them how to think about what they're going to say, have that perspective. Like later on in life, you consider other people, the whole idea of first teaching kids that, Hey, if I do something to hurt somebody should, before I do that, shouldn't I think about would it hurt if they did it to me? Like getting that, getting that reverse perspective, getting that ingrained into them early. You know, such a young age is very important and that will keep them from saying dumb crap on the internet that whenever they go to run for office, a quarter century in the future, <laughs> someone won't show that tweet from, you know, zero cool vampire killer Sephiroth X 2017 said something dumb on Twitter 25 years ago. And now they now they get shamed out of office because of one errant comment that a stupid kid made yeah. when they were a stupid kid. Right. So it's very tough. You very have to be very, very careful. I will say this. I am very glad I am not raising a child in this day and age. <laughs> wow, because ouch, that is so that is such a challenge now. It was hard enough, yeah. Probably you know before it's so much harder now. Yeah, so, I think if I ever if I ever do have kids, I'm going to put them in like this early '80s time capsule in my house, <laughs> to where like everything's going like they're only going to have an Atari 2600. Here, here's a Game Boy original Game Boy. I'm going to like put on Alf and all these other like 80s stuff I'm like i'm just put you back in the simpler time you're, <laughs> you're gonna Super live mario my 64 you know it's just gonna be all the yeah the original nes like that i've got my nes classic they're gonna play that and they're gonna like it they're and they're gonna, gonna like know it. yeah they're not gonna be exposed to social media it's it's like getting you know if i have a daughter like oh she's not gonna date until she's 35 well they're not gonna go on the internet until they're 35 you know good luck with that yeah <laughs> they're gonna be on your not... phone in uh at, at age two they'll be on your yeah. phone yeah, and they'll be trading stocks better than I could. Exactly. Like, Here, have that. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're wrapping this up. So, um, yeah. <laughs> audience, <laughs> this was a very deep and long discussion. We would love your feedback on it. And if you send it in, we may read it on the show. So, yeah, uh, please be do. Nice. <laughs> be kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be reasonable and fair, but be kind and send it in if you'd like to questions at torrentthinktank.com. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's <laughs> everything for this long episode of the show. Um, what's so. coming up for you in the next seven days? Oh, goodness gracious. Let's see. Not a whole lot. Next weekend is another Pokemon Go Community Day event. Ooh. The day before Father's Day. Uh, Larvitar is going to be the one spawning all over the world. And so I'm going to be looking forward to that. Right. See if I can get a shiny Larvitar. Um trying to think what else is coming up i have bills due next week of course yeah <laughs> just looking at my calendar not <laughs> not, not, not nothing too huge just 
another week in the life. Hopefully I'll hear back about that uh, possible promotion, see if I can get an interview scheduled the next two weeks or so. That's awesome. And uh, we'll keep on trucking. So, oh, uh, one thing that got released today, I did a uh, an interview on a podcast, um, I think last month, and uh, it's called General Chat. Mm-hmm. I sat down with Anna, who's the host there, and uh, you can find it on Twitter, at General Chat Pod, or just do a little Google search for it. We talked about a whole lot of stuff. Uh, it was great. Had a great time talking with her. So go check that out, and uh, yeah, let us know what you think about that. So yeah, I was on there. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, you can, uh, you'll probably, if you follow me on Twitter, you're going to get sick of my HTC commentary all weekend because the midseason <laughs> ball starts Saturday. Yay. Um, and if you want to get your daily esports, go and, and uh, download uh, esports daily. You can go find it. Um, you can go just do search for esports daily on your favorite podcatcher and it's also on the amazon echo as a flash briefing skills you can add that and just say play my flash briefings lady's name that i'm not going to say because otherwise she will trick her right now um mm-hmm. <laughs> and also she's... in everybody else's room that's not on speakers yes because she's always <laughs> listening that girl um <laughs> so i um you can listen to that and uh, i think that's everything for me so with that we will bring this show to a close like we always do just like this Torrent Think Tank is a proud member of the Convert to Raid podcast network. Find out more about the other great shows in the network by going to ConvertToRaid.com. Portions of the music and sound effects heard on this show can be found at Incompetech.com and Freesound.org. You can find us outside of the web, outside of the show on our website. Ooh, tongue tied. You can find us at TarnThinkTank.com, which has all of our podcasts and information on how to get in touch with us too. And it is so darn hot outside. My goodness gracious. Why am I wearing two or three? Bl- I wear black shirts all the time. I could knit a nice, lighter colored shirt with a Triple T logo on it, Jules. I could do that. You could. You know how I could do that? I'd go to tarnthinktank.com slash store and do that. You and should you can. should, too. You should. And thank you to all who support our show via Patreon. If you'd like to help out Triple T, you can do so at patreon.com slash tarnthinktank. And patrons, watch your inboxes for the next game night for June. It's coming up. And if you want to meet other members of the Triple T community, join our Discord server. The quick way to get there is tinyurl.com slash tttchat2. Do it. And while you're doing that stuff on the internet, you can also like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash tar and think tank. You can also find us on Twitter for the show at tar and think tank. You can find Jules at Jules RPG and you can find me at Mark Conan. Wow. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, chat room, for being with us tonight and hanging out every Thursday night at 8 o'clock central. You can find the video stream at twitch.tv slash torrentthinktank and be a part of our amazing chat room. We love seeing you here with us, however you can take in the show. Mm-hmm. Mark Conan. Jules. Have a lovely weekend. And you do the same. <laughs> I will. I will. I'm going to enjoy my HTC, and I'm not going to yeah. be sad about it. Yes! Yeah. We'll be Sit back. there with a big foam finger or something like, yeah! yeah. Go with Heroes Heart Esports. So we'll be back next week with another show on our normal night. Looking forward to it, and we hope that you are too. For myself, for Mark Conan, for the entire chat room, until next time, slash moo, everybody. Slash moo. Torn Think Tank. We make your problems less bad. This podcast is a part of the Signals Media All Star Network. For more information on this and other fine shows, go to signalsmedia.com. It's okay to stick our stuff in your ears. Really? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Woo, we went long tonight. Yeah, we did. And it is very warm in this room. Some of the fan is coming back on. Turn your fan on. Turn Ooh. your fan on. It's, I, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you can't leave your fan on. <laughs> oh, man. You can leave your fan on. <laughs> uh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Dad texted me and said, great show. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Thank you, Dad. Low budget Doctor Strange. Ha, ha, ha.
hypocrisy of truth 14 places you have to poop everywhere you, <laughs> you did see it the chain yeah what do you do you want that done to you <laughs> I like the hypocrisy of truths. That's the one I think. Yeah, I like, I like that one too. I shall copy and paste. It's so mysterious. Very well done. Very well done. Thank you, Draven. You almost missed the the, the start of the show. We were like we were Dravenless. We don't have a Draven. Um, yeah. Call out for we, <laughs> show titles. We were wondering where you were at. <laughs> And for those uh, of you that came in late, here's that 14 places you have to poop at before you die. There's the yeah, link to it. Yeah, you need to look at that. Cause we, so the conversation started by Mark Conan talking about how he's been driving all over um, Little Rock because and, and this, the area around because of his job. And with that comes, you start knowing like the good places to stop for the restroom and other places where you should not. And so yeah. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> So we we're looking at places of, of where you should where you should go poo at, and because I, I was looking for like, there's not a website for where should I or where should I pee dot com. Yeah, like we he actually so we checked that, that URL. <laughs> where where I should I pee? Let's see, what's a good domain uh, domain dot com? How much would it cost for a where should I pee dot com? <laughs> I'm not actually going to buy it, just so you know. I know. I know you aren't. Ah, uh, 10 bucks. I could get it. 10 bucks? Where should com. We yep, need someone, it's available. We need an app developer. And uh, <laughs> we can, uh -huh. like, you know, crowdsource that lovely thing to just, like, put on maps. Um, so, like, I saw this for... Um, it's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you've got the new, like, .com, .org, .tech. Yeah. And I just saw the one that I could, I could do, like... Where should I pee? Dot online. <laughs> Where, or dot me. Where should I pee? Dot me. <laughs> oh, have that redirect to torrent thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh. great. <laughs> Where should I pee? Dot me. <laughs> Or where should I pee dot info? There we go. That's a, yeah. that's a good one. Uh, I uh, I should ask Brian Huff if he could develop an app that people could just like <laughs> put uh put information like you could go to this uh this gas station because they have uh, very clean bathrooms and lots of nice towels. Yeah, <laughs> this gas station looks like it's like someone got murdered in there. It's just gross. Yeah. Oh, God, it's atrocities in there. Oh when goodness! You go in and you're just like the wall of stench. Oh yeah. How to get on the ceiling? Oh God. Ugh. It's hanging. How does that happen? <laughs> uh, is there a Minnesota meetup or in the works? No. I do not know of one, and I don't think there will be one. At least that I'm, not that I will be participating in planning. So, we'll see. Excuse me, goodness. I know, right? <laughs> Been a long day. I know, and we should uh, we should let you get some rest, wind down. I should do the same. I need to get a decent night's sleep for a change. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> Erlina. <laughs> uh, Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna go. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should. All right, <laughs> you guys, thanks. Anymore. Thank you for the great discussion in the chat room. We couldn't address all of it. We saw it all. So thank you yeah. for, for having good discussions going on in there. Really good discussions, and we we appreciate you so much. So we'll see you next week. Slash Moo. Slash Moo, guys. Have a great week. Thanks. <laughs>